I would like to call up this morning's speaker. Her name is Sarah, Sarah Jackson. She is, now I'm a small group leader on the school ministry and Sarah is one of the wisest people I've ever met in my life. This is a woman who is filled with the knowledge of God and the wisdom of God and the revelation of God. On top of that, her heart is just to love and to serve people. And so when you sit down with her, it's amazing because you know the answers you're going to get and the responses you're going to get are going to be like just directly from God through Sarah's voice. And so I'm so excited and so happy. So why don't we just yeah, welcome Sarah Jackson again as she preaches this morning. Wow, that, that was a pretty tall order recommendation. I'd like to issue a slight proviso that n maybe not every single word. For... <laughs> well, good morning, church family. How are you guys doing? Happy Thanksgiving. Um, we had a slight wardrobe uh, crisis in our family this morning. Um, the, the two of us were kind of tag team parenting, and by the time we got to the door, we were sort of half summer, half fall dressed. So I took care of Emily and she's in multiple layers of corduroy. Ben took care of River and she's got, you know, bare arms, bare legs, ready for the sunshine. So we're gonna see which of us run, kind of wins out over the, the dressing of our children today. Um, I didn't intend to I didn't intend to have a message on Thanksgiving this Thanksgiving, but I have a message on Thanksgiving this Thanksgiving. And um, one of the things that God's been speaking to me about the last few months is faith. How do I connect in to, to believing what he says? How do I make the bridge between my circumstances, my life, and the reality and the truth of his word? Does anyone ever else wrestle around a little bit like that? That you're kind of like, well, I am here, and what I'm physically seeing, touching, experience is one thing, but then I read the word, and his words say, tell me of a greater reality, a greater truth, and I want more and more of this to become my tangible reality. But what do we do in the in-between time? What do we do in the in-between time? Because do we just be like, oh, well, I read it, and that's what I want, and now I'm just going to be immersed again in the reality of my day-to-day -day life where maybe I'm experiencing sickness or financial struggle or relational crisis or emotional crisis or whatever sort of crisis there is to be experiencing. And God began to speak to me about thankfulness. You know, in one of those lovely God segues where you're asking him one question and then he starts talking about something totally different and you're like, could we refocus on my question? <laughs> yeah, I, I've given up refocusing on the question because I realized he's God and I'm not and I need to, I'm like, oh, maybe he's talking about this for a reason. And I began to notice that in the New Testament, on multiple occasions, we are instructed and commanded to be thankful. Now, is that because God really wants us as followers of Jesus to be very polite people? Is politeness and good manners deeply on God's heart for us? Well, maybe. You know, obviously, Ben and I are in a season of life where we're trying to teach our toddler about good manners and social skills, and there's a lot of modeling going on in our house. Ben, would you please pass me the salt? Why, yes, Sarah, oh, thank you for the salt. You know, there's a lot of please and thank you happening where we are. Is that what, is that what God's intention was? Is it more, it, surely there's more to it than celebrating Thanksgiving once a year? And God began to speak to me how actually thanksgiving is intended to be a really powerful tool that engages our faith. Thanksgiving connects us with God, and it connects us with the power and the reality of his truth, and it calls down the promises that we're standing saying, yes, that's true, into our reality now. 
even when we've not experienced them yet. And his intention is more than a nice social formality, more than something we flood social media with for the next three days, but something that when, when it engages and exercises our faith, causes us to grow in faith, causes us to grow in connection with him, and, and really provides a focal point for God to break in in our lives. Thankfulness can transform our thoughts and our emotions. And sometimes we can just be like, oh, yes, thank you very much. Thank you for the chocolate cake. Thank you for the gift. Thank you for this. But are we exercising true biblical thankfulness in our lives? Let's look at some of the scriptures he talks about. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.6, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Colossians 3, uh, no, Ephesians 5.20, Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Are you noticing the in every set situation, in every circumstance, always? There's a pretty strong emphasis. That is a strong emphasis on every situation, always be thankful. When I started to, you know, there's emphasis comes in repetition. And there is repetition of this theme. I mean, it doesn't stop there. Whatever you do, whether in word or de deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. So, would people describe you as a person who's overflowing in thankfulness? Is that how you would describe your, yourself? Seems to me as followers of Jesus that that is, that is supposed to be one of the describers. That wasn't great grammar, but I had a baby three months ago. I, didn't, I don't have all my words back yet. <laughs> the, we're called to be people who are known as thankful. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. Do you devote yourself to thankfulness? I've been really convicted as I've been studying this. I'm like, whoa, you talk about thankfulness a lot more than maybe I practice it. I need to emphasize this in my life. So what's this whole in all circumstances thing? You know, when you think about who Paul was writing to in some of these letters, who some of these letters were addressed to, wouldn't it have been a little bit, you know, kinder to say, when you can, be as thankful as possible. I know some of you are slaves, so you're probably not going to be having the best time. You know, he, when you can, on a good day, when everything's going well, be as thankful as possible, because this pleases is the Lord. No, he said, in all situations, in all cir circumstances, whatever you're doing, be thankful. Why not when your circumstances allow? It's easy to be thankful when you're going well. You know, anyone ever had a promotion? Do you not feel fairly thankful at that moment? A pay raise? Thankfulness might well up within your heart. You know, you, you get married, you have a baby, you, you know, you find the perfect pair of boots that you have been looking for. See? I know when thankfulness wells up in your heart. The Blue Jays, you know? There was thankfulness that welled up in your heart, wasn't there? That you were like, yes, is it possible? A miracle has happened. Thankfulness, you know, when good things happen, it's easy to be thankful. But what about when you lose your job? When you're still single and you had that prophetic word 
10 years ago that God had a wonderful spouse for you? What about when life is just hard? It's hard to get out of bed. It's hard to, to just do the things, the necessities of your day. What about when life seems out of control? Are you serious that God is calling us to be thankful in those situations? Well, how can we be thankful is if thankfulness is circumstantial? We can't. So thankfulness has to be based on more than our circumstances. Because if it's just based on our, thank our circumstances, we'd be kind of 30% of the time th thankful people. You know, oh, over into 60% this week. It's been a good week. No. He's saying sickness, health, good days, bad days, when your baby screams all night long, when your husband screams all day long, I don't know, when whatever the, whatever the challenges are that you face, he's telling us in those situations that we can be thankful. How? How? Let's get down to how. I like how. I like to read the word and then I'm like, how? How does this work? How do I live this out? How does this become reality in my life? Let's segue over to talk about faith for a moment. Faith is really important. All of us have been given a measure of faith. Faith is something that pleases God that we want to grow in. Faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we don't see. You know, if I've got a whole bunch of like scriptures I could probably wheel off in my head. I'm like, oh, faith is... Kenneth Copeland last September gave an amazing message on faith. And one of the things he talked about was the faith of Thomas versus the faith of Abraham. And in the New Testament, I don't know, do you remember when Jesus has risen again, he reveals himself to the disciples. And then he, Thomas isn't there. So the other guys are like, whoa, Jesus, you're here. And Thomas is, Thomas is kind of like, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. Thomas is saying, Until, unless I touch it, unless I see it in front of me, I'm not going to believe. And so then when Jesus, a week later, Jesus comes into the room where they are and he walks up to Thomas and he's like, touch, see, you know, experience. And he says, because you've seen me, you've believed. Blessed are those, though, who have not seen and yet have believed. And so Thomas's faith was really based on his experience. Whereas Abraham was commended for his amazing faith that he, he hoped beyond all hope. His body was as good as dead, but he still believed the promise of God that he would be the father of many nations. And you and I, we are all children of Abraham. We're in that, we want to be in, we're in that faith lineage of, of people who believe even though we haven't got it yet. We believe even though we haven't touched, seen it yet, that we have faith in God to do what he said he's going to do. So in the same way, thankfulness for a promotion is more, is, is, is kind of like natural. It's like the faith of Thomas. I've got it. I've received it. Sarah, would you like a laptop? Yes, thank you. I am deeply thankful for this laptop. I've received it. I've got it in my hands. But God is calling us to a level of biblical thankfulness where we are thankful even when we may not have what we're believing for yet. It's like the thankfulness of Abraham. I don't know if I can make that stretch. Can I make that stretch, Gordon? Don't get me wrong. It's really important to be thankful for the good, tangible things we have already received. You know, in thankfulness will shift your mind, your thoughts, your emotions. You know, if I'm at home and I, you know, one of those days where you wake up and just you feel kind of like you got out the wrong side of bed, maybe 
you feel a bit like the living dead. I've never been a morning person having children, you know, helps that a little bit. You know, every morning starts at 7 or 6.30 or whenever it is. And it's, it's not my, I'm not really on my game at that moment. And there were, but there are some mornings where I'm a bit like, oh, am I alive? Can I walk down the steps? And on those mornings, you know, when, that, when there's a day where you feel like your whole day could sort of like bump along the bottom somewhere. And just like, oh, I knocked my mug of coffee onto the carpet. Of course. And then, you, you know, whatever you put your hand to fails. In those times, that's when I step back into the realm of practical thankfulness. Where I'm just like, where, where my emotions, my heart are a bit like, oh, I start to be like, well, thank you that the sky is blue. Thank you that it's sunny. I love the weather you give us in Canada, God. Thank you for that. And I start to step back into seeing what I have rather than my life being focused on what I don't have and what's going wrong. I'd call that practical thankfulness. And that, that's a powerful thing and something we want to be practicing on a daily basis. There are some fascinating studies about that, did you know? That actually you have what's called, basically, you know, they, almost like a, a gratitude muscle in your brain. That the more you practice thankfulness, it, it, it exercises that part, and then you become naturally thankful. And they've started doing all these, um, these studies on it because they, they noticed that people who were struggling with anxiety, their anxiety was lessening the more they practiced gratitude and thankfulness. And that when people practice being thankful, they then started to act positively to those around them, which then had a knock-on effect because those people started feeling thankful. Fascinating. That's, that's, a, that's a, you know, embrace our practical thankfulness. But what about on those, on those, those times where we are saying, God, you've given me a promise, or I'm facing a crisis, what do we do then? If, the, if thankfulness is not based on circumstance, what is it based on? And it is based on who God is, full stop. Who he is, because he is good. And his love for us endures forever. That is what enables us to be thankful when our whole world is blowing up around us. That is what enables us to be thankful when we're in crisis because our thanks is based on him. You know, the refrain of give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love endures forever is repeated again and again and again and again in the Old Testament. We can be thankful to God because he is our good, good father. He is good when we feel like he's good. We, he is good when we are weeping, we are angry. He is, his, the thoughts of his heart, the intentions of who he is, is good through and through. And all of us want to be moving deeper into a revelation of his incredible loving goodness and kindness towards us. But when you feel like you're hanging on by one fingernail and just like, I, I don't even know a prayer of faith. I don't know how to believe God for anything. You can start with, thank you, God, that you are good. Thank you that you are good. Thank you that your love is towards me. That is where we can begin our kind of thankfulness holding on that begins to propel us toward the promises that God has for us. When you look at um, the story of uh, Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20, um, Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah, and he gets a report that there is a vast army coming towards them. So the pe he gathers the people together, they all send representatives, and they're just like, God, what do we do? Like, this vast army could annihilate us. I mean, we have no chance against this army. It's so overwhelmingly big. And God speaks to them, and he says, do not worry, I'm going to fight this battle for you. Do not be afraid. 
go out to meet them tomorrow. And everyone is just like, yes, God has spoken. And so the next morning they get up and they begin to go toward the army. Now, I don't know about you, but you know that moment when God has spoken a promise, you're like, yes. And then like 10 minutes later, your, head's, your head begins to spin and you're like, I wonder what it's going to look like. Is this one of those things where you go towards the army, you fight valiantly, and your tiny group overcomes the enemy, but you do have losses of 50%? That would still be a victory, but what about the 50% of people who unfortunately lost their lives in this small encounter? Do you think like that? I think like that when I read the Bible. I'm like, well, what's it going to look like? I can skim ahead, but they couldn't skim ahead. They had no clue. God had said, I'm going to fight for you. But what what did that look like? And often in the in-between, in-between the promise and the receiving of it, that's when our hearts and minds freak out. And they're just like, ah! What's it going to look like? And that's when we're often tempted to step back and rely on ourselves. Or step back and hide. Or just embrace fear. You know, to be honest, that's the sort of stuff that goes on. And what happens in that moment How do we corral our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, our emotions? We see Jehoshaphat speaks to the people, and they they gather a group of singers to stand in front of the army, and they walk out in front to meet the army, and they sing, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. He is good. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not sure that's like the greatest strategy I've ever heard of. I would have probably felt, you know, like that's a lovely idea, like a little music for the few hour walk, very nice, but what about gathering the toughest, most battle-hardened men we have around, putting them at the front? You know, just just casually, they could go at the front. Those of us who've not had so much experience, we could go behind a little bit. And no, they put the singers out the front, and they lead them out with shouts of praise, singing, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. And what I want to say is that that thankfulness, that praise in the middle of the unknown in the middle of the crisis, in the middle of that moment where you're facing a vast, overwhelming situation, that is engaging your faith. That is the moment where you're, how, you're, you're kind of flexing your puny little faith muscle, or maybe your extremely well-developed faith muscle, and saying, regardless of what my circumstances look like, I will give thanks to the Lord for he is good and he is going to be good. His love towards us endures. And so, I mean, it's, a, it's an amazing story. When they get out there, the Lord had set an ambush against the army and basically the entire army killed each other until they get to this like cliff overlooking the plain and the whole army is there dead because they killed each other. That is an astonishing miracle. They had no clue what was going to happen when they got up to the edge of that cliff. You often don't know how God is going to bring a miracle into your life. Anybody? Often we get to that place and we've got an idea of how God's going to do it. And he does something like way out in left field. They're like, I didn't even think that was possible. And what I felt, God, in... (laughs) Is that... Oh, we're back. I don't think you want me to dance. 
It's not my strongest point. Ben says he loves my dancing, that I, I, I carry the enthusiasm of a five-year-old. <laughs> Which, it's true, it's true. I, I dance a lot like my dad, passing the blame on. Speaking of my dad, if my dad said to me, Sarah, we want to buy you a car. Woo! I would start being thankful right away. Do you know why I'd start being thankful right, right away? Because my dad keeps his word. My dad is a man of his word. If you know him, you know that he, if he says he'll do something, he'll do it. He never says something that he's, he's not able to carry through on. It's one of the things I love about him. But I, I could start being thankful immediately because there's a car coming my way. Now, if I met a stranger and they said, oh my goodness, I want to buy you a car, I'd be like, oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, that, that's wonderful. But I think I would reserve my Thanksgiving until I received the car. Because I don't know them. Who knows what they're like? You know, they might be, you know, sometimes in the heat of enthusiasm, we say things. I love you. Yes, I'd like to give you a car. And then you go back and talk with your husband or wife, and they're like, hey, we didn't talk about that together. You know, maybe that hasn't happened to you. Maybe in all your marriages, you have full agreement all the time and, you know, excellent nonverbal communication. We're still working on it. But the reason we can be thankful when God speaks to us is because he is a God who keeps his word and promises. That his character, his nature doesn't change. And one of the incredible, powerful things about getting to know God as Father is as we begin to receive his love, we can trust in his love toward us. If we've got lots of bad experience from the past, it may be hard for us to trust. It may be hard for us to believe that, is God really going to come through for me because remember all these other things. And God wants to bring healing to our hearts where we've experienced broken promises. That even when things don't come through the way we imagine they will, that we can trust in his goodness. You know, the Hebrews 11 roll call of faith talks about the fact that some of the people died in faith. They hadn't yet received the promise, but they, they, that didn't mean they weren't going to receive it. They were, they were kind of like going into glory, filled with faith and confidence in who God is. So that... When we begin to give thanks, it creates this focal point for God to come in. What was it? Nine years ago now. I think it was nine years ago when I had my head injury. Um, you know, I cracked my rib, broke my rib, split the back of my head open. Um, and a few days later began to discover that I'd lost my sense of taste and smell. In the weeks and months that followed... My challenge was to hold on to the promise of healing. When every second of every day was confronting me with not healing. And my emotions were shouting loudly that they felt very distressed about this. Now, my thankfulness wasn't fake. It wasn't like, oh, thank you, God, I'm healed, yay. Denying the angst of the soul. It was a bit more like David. David was immensely thankful. You read any of those Psalms? That guy, he knew how to thank. He also knew how to pour his heart out to God and gnash his teeth and communicate the reality of his heart. And then he would end up in this glorious thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, promised based thanksgiving. Thanksgiving based on God's promises, on his word, isn't some sort of fake thing of like, oh, thank you, God, that I'm happy. When you're, you're like, oh, I'm not. But it, it's like, well, thank you, God, that you say that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I declare that and I come into agreement with your word. And I thank you that you say that. 
You know, I did a lot of thanking of, thank you, God, that you are me, my healer. Thank you, Jesus, that this healing belongs to me because of what you did on the cross. Thank you, Jesus, that by your stripes I'm healed. And I would just, that's what I would speak out in my thanks. Sometimes I would cry it out. But I would connect, it would bring my heart, my mind, my emotions, which were like all over the place, back into this place of connection with the heart of God. And I feel, I feel like there's a whole bunch of you here today who, who feel like you're facing a vast army, like Jehoshaphat did. You're facing diagnoses, you're facing crises in your life that feel like this overwhelming army that you haven't got a chance. And, and I felt like God is saying, I want you to step back into the place of thankfulness, promised-based thankfulness. Promise-based thankfulness is where we are just taking the scriptures and like, well, God, you say this. Not sort of like, well, thank you, God, everything's going to be fine, amen. It's hard to, it, you can't rely on everything's fine. But you can get in here and say, this is a book of promises. I can thank God out of what he said. So our dear friend Jill, she's facing a really intense diagnosis of brain cancer. And, you know, she was part of our school of ministry. She's um, now a pastor at Freedom Center. And, you know, I've been holding her in our hearts for the last few weeks as, you know, they're going through this journey and I just like, I can just feel like I'm stepping back into this place of like, Father, I thank you that your word says that by Jesus' stripes, Jill is healed. I thank you. And, you know, I'm asking God, what are your promises? What are the things that you are speaking so that I can just start thanking him and praying, Father, I thank you that you're good. I thank you that you're a good, good father to Jill and Kirsten. I thank you that you're a good, and I'm just praying that I'm, I'm, I'm getting into the place of faith. I'm like, Father, thank you that you healed me because I remember your goodness. And one of the ways to really start exercising that faith muscle is to, is to begin to remember his goodness in the past. And so, you know, for me, I want to pray out of a place of faith and anticipation that we're connecting heaven to earth. And sometimes it's, as, it's just holding on to thank you that you're good. And sometimes you're like, I've got 27 scriptures to be thankful for this afternoon, you know, depending on the day. But I want to challenge you to start finding the promises that you're being thankful for in here. That when you face crisis, you start asking God, what are you saying? Because this book is a book full of promises for us. Promises that we can stand on because his word is truth and his truth is higher than the reality and the, and the circumstances that we face right now. It is a pretty outrageous thankfulness that God invites us into. It is outrageous to be thankful in all circumstances. But we're called to be people of faith. Even as a corporate body, as a, as a church family, there are promises God has spoken over us as a church. Yes? Do you remember a few of them? A few people are like, yes. That there's, there's another wave of God's presence coming. That there's going to be significant healings and supernatural signs and wonders here as a church family. That we're going to see people lining up to get in to encounter the presence of God. That excites me. Does that excite you? Yeah. Now, it's not just the job of Stephen, Sandra, and John and Patricia to have faith for that. Well, guys, could you hurry up and have a bit more faith for that so that I'm, I'd like to come to church and experience that? Wouldn't that be lovely? No. It's us as a family. We're that we all participate in this, that we all start saying, thank you, God, you did it before, you're going to do it again. Thank you, God, for what you've said. Thank you. And as we start to grow 
you know, faith and anticipation as a church, as a corporate body, all together, we welcome in and make a place for the next thing that God wants to do. So that that's when, I, I really feel that's when God begins to move when as a, as a group, we're, we're ready. We're like, yes, we're, you know, we're ready for anything, God, where we begin to have a vision for what he's doing. And when I was praying about this morning, I just felt him say, there are things I want to do in you as a church that I want, I want your faith and expectation and anticipation to be ready with open arms, to be ready to receive the gifts that I have for you. So that it's not just like, well, it's just church as usual. I come, I get a nice coffee, you know, a little bit of worship with my coffee. You know, go home for a nice lunch. Had a good word. But actually, we are like, is it going to be this week that God breaks in? Is, it, is, is today the day? I don't know about you, but have you felt the last few weeks just God is up to something. There's just this sort of, like, anticip- like, I feel like God's breaking in in all sorts of different ways. And he is, he is inviting us to kind of start thanking him in advance. The people aren't lined up yet, but they're coming. The, the presence of God is coming into this church to do something new. And we want to have all of our hearts ready for that, anticipating that, seeing and pulling down from heaven the promises that he's made over us as a church. Even last week, that that prophecy about how the church is going to have an impact on the city. Come on. Yes. I get, I get excited about this. Because we're not called to be a people of same old, same old. But moving forward and, and, and embracing the promises that God has spoken over us, not just personally, but also corporately. And so this morning, I, I, I want us I to do one or two things. Number one, I want us just to take a moment and think, am I characterized by thankfulness in my life? You know, ask yourself that question honestly. When things are hard, am I thankful? And I'm not just talking about the negative Nancy sort of thankfulness, which is a bit like, well, things are fairly terrible, but they could be even worse. (laughs) I was run over by the truck, but it could have reversed back over me. (laughs) Yes, we are thankful that it didn't reverse back over us. But that's, a, that's kind of like a worst-case scenario thankfulness. That's not thankfulness based on God's goodness. But are we thankful? Are we able... Think about Paul. Paul was in prison. He was in chains, and he was writing these peppy letters. I consider it all joy. Oh, what I, here I am rejoicing in my chains for you. I'm like, Really? I have, I have, there are new depths of thankfulness that I need to access. Think about Daniel. Daniel 6, you, you know, they, they pr- pass this proclamation saying, oh, you know, if you're going to, you can't pray to anybody else. If you do, you'll be thrown to the lions. He goes home, prays, and thanks God as normal. You know, I'm just like, that was, that was impressive. That you're just able to be like, yes, thank you for another lovely day here in Babylon. When, you know, you could probably hear the hungry roaring of the lions close by. And God delivers him. God saves him. Are you practicing biblical promise-based thankfulness in your life? Because it's time to start doing it. I want to challenge you this week to practice thankfulness every day to practice writing down thankfulness. Maybe, you know, for those of you who journal, every day take time to be like, God, what am I thankful for? And then I'm going to invite the worship team back up because I, I want us to, to worship and out of the worship to, to, be, to be declaring, 
into the situations of our life. God, you are good and your love endures forever in the face of these things. How many of you can think of a circumstance in life right now where you're feeling like, whoa, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure how the promises of God are going to come to pass. Or I'm believing for something and it's not happened yet. Anybody? 15, 13, 27? Okay, most of us. And if, if, you're not, if you can't think of anything, then read this Bible a bit more. There's, there's some really good things we're not living in quite yet. And as we worship this morning, I want us to take a moment to be like, okay, to, to worship and step back into the place of, Father, thank you for who you are. And I declare that into this situation. I declare your goodness. I think about this thing and I, I just say, you are good. And maybe there's a promise that God's given you, but just to start thanking him. Not just out of the practicality but out of who he is. Because that's what we can rely on. That's, that's the firm foundation we can come back to, regardless of our circumstance, regardless of the situation we face. Hmm. Father, why don't we just stand for a moment? Just before we start that, I feel like there are some of you here who have who've experienced people breaking their word to, to you many times, or you've experienced something that you believed God for and it didn't turn out as you wanted it to. It really broke your heart, it wounded you, and you found it hard to trust, to, 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 to have faith for something in your life because you, you don't want to be disappointed again. And I just want us to take a moment, if that's you, to forgive those people. If it was your mum and dad who would always be like, yeah, yeah, I'll be there, I'll come. Oh, sorry, I couldn't make it, I couldn't make it. Oh, man, I had a 25 good reasons. But I just feel like for some of you, that, that's been a real blockage in your ability to trust, in your ability to be thankful because thankfulness can be vulnerable. So if that's you, just pray along with me. Father, today, I choose to forgive those people who broke my trust. Those people who, who broke their promise to me. And Father, I repent for judging them. repent for judging them that they'd never keep their word. That I can't trust leaders. That I can only rely on myself. And Father, I give you the pain of that. And some of you need to give God back that pain of the things you've stood in faithful that didn't quite turn out like you thought. And Father, I just release you today from any judgment I've held against you for not healing that person, for not fulfilling that promise in the way I'd, I'd hoped or imagined. And I repent for where I've drawn back from you where I've held my heart back from you. I repent for where I've not wanted to believe because I didn't want to be disappointed. And Dad, would you just come and pour your healing into our hearts today? Pour your love into our hearts today. Father, we, 
we know you to be our good, good Father. Would you just come and pour a revelation of that into our hearts that would wash out the disappointment we've experienced, the betrayal we've experienced. Come. And today we want to realign our hearts, our minds, our emotions with your truth, with who you are, because you are good and your love endures. I just feel like we should say that as a, as, a, as a church together. God, you are good and your love endures forever. I say it again. Father, you are good and your love endures forever. Hi, let's say it again. Father, you are good. And your love endures forever. I think we need to shout it this time. Father, you are good. And your love endures forever. Hi. Yeah. Show. Okay, as we sing, I want your heart to be in alignment with that. Sing it into the crises. Sing it into the difficult things. Sing His love into your life. You are good, you are good, and your love and yours. You are good, you are good, and your love and yours. You are good. You are good and your love and yours today. Oh, today and for all days, you are good, you are good and your love and yours. You are good, you are good and your love and yours. You are good, you are good and your love.
joined by the instruments And then your glory came Your presence like a cloud As on the ancient day The priests were We declare your goodness and your love over our lives. We declare your goodness and love over this city, over this church. And we align ourselves, body, soul, mind, and spirit with the truth that you are good and that your love endures. Wow. I feel like some of you may want to come down to the front here and just as we just sing that chorus out again that you, you're facing some, some things that you're like you, you need to kind of make a like a physical move and say I am going to choose to be thankful I'm going to choose to align myself with God's goodness and if that's you I want to invite you to come out here to the front to to, to kind of physically move as, as a sign of your kind of internal alignment um, and we're gonna we're gonna sing that again for the rest of you. I want to release you on Happy Thanksgiving Sunday um, to be blessed, to have an incredible week, and to be thankful this week for He is good. Let's sing it again, Jonathan. Just sacrifice was made. fire came they nailed upon the ground and with one voice they prayed the sacrifice was made and then your fire came they nailed upon You are good, you are good, and you're 